My weird school. Fast facts. Space, humans, and farts. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. The beginning. My name is Professor AJ, and I know everything there is to know about science. You probably don't know anything about science, Arlo. Oh no! It's Andrea Young, that annoying girl in my class with curly brown hair. She calls me by my real name because she knows I don't like it. Well, it just so happens that I know a lot about science because my great uncle Ernie was a scientist. Is that so? Yes, that's so. You've heard of the law of gravity. Well, my great uncle Ernie discovered the law of towels. I never heard of a law of towels, Arlo. What is it? The law of towels states that a towel can never get dirty because we use it to dry ourselves off when we get out of the shower or wash our hands. We're clean, so the towel has to be clean. That's why towels can never get dirty. That's the law of towels. That's just ridiculous, Arlo, and you know it. Yeah, some kids will fall for anything they read in a book, but I know lots of real science facts too. I bet you didn't know that the average person produces about three pounds of earwax in their lifetime. That's a true science fast fact. Look it up if you don't believe me. Nobody cares about the science of earwax, Arlo. We're here to talk about important science stuff. Says who? Earwax is important. I know all about the science of earwax, farts, boogers, poop, and snot too. I could write a whole book about it. Hey, we should do the whole book about the science of grossness. You can write that one by yourself, Arlo. For now, let's get started on this one. Okay, okay, but I want to tell the readers one last thing before we get started. On the last page of this book, I'm going to reveal the secret of the universe. So if you just can't wait to learn the secret, turn to the last page of this book right now. Sincerely, Professor AJ, the professor of awesomeness. Andrea Young, Ph.D. This is going to help me get into Harvard someday. Chapter One: The Why Game. Hi, everybody. My name is Mr. Docker, and I'm the science teacher at elementary school. Andrea and AJ asked me to help them tell you a little about science. I'm happy to help. I guess I should start from the beginning. Science is knowledge of the world learned through experiments and observation. Okay, that makes no sense at all, Mr. Docker. Perhaps I can explain in simpler terms, AJ. Science is how we learn new things. It's all about asking questions and trying to find the answers to them. Do you mean questions like why do scientists seem so nerdy? Why is science so boring? How do I get an A in science class? No, Arlo. Mr. Docker means asking questions that will help us learn about the world around us. Questions like, why is the sky blue? Why do elephants have long chunks? Am I right, Mr. Docker? That's right, Andrea. I think kids make great scientists because you're naturally curious. I have a good science question. When snow melts and turns into water, where does the white go? Huh? What? Hmm. I never really thought about that, AJ. But the point I'm trying to make 
is that anyone can be a scientist. All you have to do is look around and ask why. I love it when kids ask why questions. I have a good why question. Is it true that sound can't travel through a vacuum? Yes, that's true, AJ. That's a fact. Well, if sound can't travel through a vacuum, why are vacuum cleaners so loud? Wait, what? Is that a joke? If ice floats, why is Antarctica at the bottom of the world? Shouldn't it be at the top? Uh, hmm. I don't know. Will you look at the time? It's getting light. I need to go. Why do meteors always land in craters? Um, I never thought about that. Why does toast always land butter side down? I have to go to a meeting right now, but I'll check back with you two in a little while to see how you're making out. Oh, gross! We're not going to make out. Try this. Play the why game. Here's how you play. Ask your mom or dad a question, any question, no matter what they answer. Ask why, and then when they answer that, ask why again. Then just keep asking why, no matter what they say. At first, they're going to be happy that you seem so curious about the world, but very soon they'll realize that you're just being annoying. See how many times you can ask why before your parents tell you to knock it off. My record is nine. Chapter two. Mr. Docker explains the scientific method. Before AJ and Andrea give you all their fast facts, I should explain the scientific method. This is the process scientists use to learn things. You can use it too. The scientific method always begins with a question. The question would be about something you want to know. Let's say your question is, "What color are pumpkins?" Next, you, the scientist, will do some research on the subject. You might read articles about pumpkins. You might go online and search for websites about pumpkins. You might see what other scientists have discovered about pumpkins. Now it's time for you to come up with your hypothesis. That's a fancy word that basically means a guess. Let's say your hypothesis is. Pumpkins are blue. Next, you need to run an experiment to see if your hypothesis is true. You might gather a hundred people in a room, show them a bunch of pumpkins, and ask them to write on a piece of paper what color the pumpkins are. Then the results needed to be collected, recorded, and tallied up. Let's say ninety-nine of the hundred people wrote orange, and one smart aleck wrote, "My cousin's pumpkin wrote the Declaration of Independence." You can look at the results and be reasonably sure that your hypothesis was wrong. Pumpkins are not blue. You also wasted a lot of time on a silly experiment. But just to be sure, you need to do the experiment all over again to make sure the results weren't just an accident or a coincidence. Finally, your last step as a scientist is to come to a conclusion and share the results with the world. You would publish it in a scientific journal that will be read by other scientists. Because your results didn't prove your hypothesis. You might start all over again with a new hypothesis. Pumpkins are red. That example was kind of silly, but that's how the scientific method works. All scientists use it. Before we had the scientific method to learn about the world, silly rumors and superstitions would be accepted as facts. During the Middle Ages, some doctors believed that diseases were caused by having too much blood in the body, so they would do a bloodletting. Yes, to heal people, they would cut open that person so he or she would bleed. You can imagine how that worked out. 
just a few hundred years ago. Tomatoes were considered to be poisonous. That's right, no pizza, no spaghetti with meat sauce. What happened was that in parts of Europe during the late seventeen hundreds, many people died after eating tomatoes. The tomato was called the poison apple. But it wasn't the tomatoes that killed people. It was because wealthy people ate off pewter plates, which were made from lead. Tomatoes are very acidic, so the lead leached off the plates into the tomatoes, and people got lead poisoning. If they had used the scientific method back then, and done a simple experiment using different kinds of plates, they would have learned it was the plates that were poisonous, not the tomatoes. It's good that we have science and the scientific method. Science has made our lives easier. Science has taught us a lot about our planet. Science has even allowed us to leave our planet and explore outer space. Speaking of which.